My titties are filling out. What do you mean filling out? I've been really trying. I've been really working at getting. Because since I'm not going to get breast implants, I want to get like pecs. Like pecs, bitch. But the problem is I have a lot of fat there. So there's a lot of work to be done to get pecs. But I've definitely noticed a change in the past couple of months. In the past like two months, honestly. Well, you know, there's stuff you can do. Um, Chest exercises? Well, there's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a lot of different things you can do to, to make your chest look the way you want it to look between um, dieting and working out and um, cosmetic surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to diet, work out, or do cosmetic no, surgery? Oh, God, two, damn, bitch. No, I was, into the first I, was like, I was like, Jesus I don't want to get pec implants. That doesn't speak to me. You know that guy who's... You can also have... Um, the fat removed. Yeah, but I've seen people do that, and sometimes it doesn't always work out because you have loose skin afterwards. Sometimes, depending on your the, on the elasticity of your skin, it could be like really flabby skin, and I'm not into that either. You can also get it stitched up too. Then you get like scars and marks. I've thought about all those things. Trust and believe. I really thought about it because I you we talked about this you and Garquifa Hall, Shaquita Hall from New York City, you guys have good pecs. Like, you can, you you have, like, good pecs, like, not in drag. When you're in drag, you can, like, push the skin to give this. I don't really have pecs. I just... You do, though. You don't, you, I mean, you don't Everyone have... Everyone has pecs. You're not, right. You, you're not fucking Hulk Hogan, but you have a, you have the assemblage of, like, a little pectoral muscle that when you're, when you don't have anything on, you, you're not like, bitch, me. You know what I mean? Well, I'm just going to thank you for your compliment. You know, I think that all of us have good pecs. We have the pecs we have, and we, um, why are you rolling your eyes? Because I'm, <laughs> because I'm affirming my body and the body of others. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we just talk candidly on the podcast? And this just is like, how I talk all the time. This is how I talk when I'm on the podcast, when I'm on the podcast. This is how I always talk. No, I, don't, I don't ever go around saying, he's got good, bad, he's got this. Okay, there are certain times that you and I shoot the shit as friends. And, be like, you and I say, he has good hair, he has bad hair. Okay, I'm not talking about that specifically. Just certain things. You're like, Monet. Well, this is how I talk about bodies. I talk about okay, bodies, no sure. matter Whether I'm on the podcast or not, I don't like when you try to make this seem like I'm doing a thing and I'm on the podcast. When I talk about bodies, when I'm on the podcast or not on the podcast, I do not be like, this is a good body, this is a bad body, this is a good peck, this is a bad peck. This but, is how I talk about bodies in general. But there are certain things that you and I discuss when we're just shooting the shit as friends. We'd be like, Monet, can we just can we just talk as friends? We, Monet, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're, we're just talking as, you know what I'm but talking about. this is how I talk about bodies. No matter where I'm talking, no matter who I'm talking to you, this is how okay, I well, talk about I, bodies. Okay. I'm not asking you to change your, all I'm saying is, I'm not asking you to change how you're, all I'm saying is, I think that my picks are good, those picks are good. I'm not Asking you to change your stance. I'm just saying this is what how is this move you're doing? You. I'm saying this is how I talk about bodies. And then you're like, can you just be I am being me? This is how I talk mm. about bodies. Okay. Like when have you like what what else? This is how I talk about bodies. I'm not gonna out you. Don't do that, because you're trying to make you're trying to do this like vacancy and waste where you where it's acting like I do this also, thing. Also, I'm screaming. I need to where where I behind scream. the scenes, I'm like, this fat nigga, this big bitch, this, that, that, and I do not do that. So, I mean that, that is language that we use. I'm not saying that you use it to like make someone feel bad. I use words fat and this and that, but I right. don't but I don't use words like fat is good. Yeah, no, I don't bad. think I don't I don't so don't insinuate we're not, that I we, do that. Not, neither of us do that. And no one did that on this, on this podcast. That's not the insinuation I was making. All that happened was I just said that my picks are good, people's picks are good, and you rolled your eyes as if as if I'm putting on for the podcast when you know. I did not say you were putting talk. on. Well, what were you saying? I was saying, can we just have like a little, a conversation that's a little disarmed? But this is how I talk. I'm not armed. This is how I talk. Like, you want me to just change the way I converse so that you feel better about saying pecs are good and bad? <laughs> That's what it sounds like you're saying to me. All right, moving on. Anyway, water. We're talking about water today. How do you think about water? No, we, we have never gone to a topic four minutes into the podcast. Uh, you know, this, you know we, can, we can pick it on Destiny. We can, we can dance around. We can do it early. We can do it later. We, can, we, we own this podcast. Do you know that? 50 for 50, 50, 50. We can do whatever we want. We can not talk about the topic. We can talk about it now. We can talk about it later. Did you know that? Well, I'm just sticking to the format that we normally do, that we've been doing for like five years. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> I think it's... Y'all can't see Jacob, this is Jacob. I mean, it's not like this is not a... Glasses that, off, that we've done for, That we've done for five, <laughs> for five years now. Okay. So what would you like to continue on to next? Well, I was just... I don't know. You, you, you seem like you don't want to talk about what, what I want to talk about. Which is what? <laughs> well, I don't know. I was... I, at one point, you were talking about pecs. 
And then uh, then you were, I don't know what you were insinuating, but it, it felt like a mischaracterization. So then I just tried to clear how I was feeling about it, but then you didn't want to talk about that anymore. And now you want to talk about water. Oh, no, I was just trying to not argue for a, for a certain amount of time. We, we did that last episode. Just trying to just move things along is what I'm trying to do. Because we can argue to, the, to, to both blue in the face in, in a very circular way. So I'm just trying to progress, get to the next benchmark. Well, when did we try not, when, when did we ever try to not argue on this podcast? I, I make a concerted effort to uh, not we argue. We did. We actually had an episode where we specifically tried not to argue. Thank you. Yeah, an episode. Also, not, that's not what we do normally. Also, but I make a concerted effort when arguments are just going and going. I try to move them along. Every, not every time. A lot of times I do. Mark. Lovely. Do you want to talk about where we're at today? We're in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we're going to see a Lizzo concert um, at the arena here. Yeah, Lizzo's having her concert. We're going to go in New York, in Los Angeles. San Francisco. We um, look up dates in San Francisco. California. But for the tickets that we wanted, they were, <laughs> they were bad expensive, yo. So we decided to fly to Indiana instead to get tickets to see them here at this arena. Um, yeah, I've never seen Lizzo live. Oh, no, I did. I saw it at the VMAs. She performed To Be Loved at the VMAs and was really great. And I can't, I'm really excited to see her in like all of her regalia with all her dancers and this bitch headlining arena is bitch work. Also, I like dragged my elbow somewhere yesterday. You know when you have like these, uh, a, a rug burn? That shit is fucking annoying as hell. It's like peeling and shit. And it's still so tender. Did, um, you, did you fall down somewhere? No, I don't know. How did, honestly, I don't know how I got a rug burn. I don't know how I got a rug burn. It may have been from some adult activity, but I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe at the gym. Who knows? I saw Lizzo um, at DragCon 2018. She performed there. Mm-hmm. And then I saw What Lizzo. song did she do? Um, I think she did Phone and a couple of songs from Coconut Oil. And then I saw Lizzo, um, obviously, at the VMAs. We were both there together. And she was um, she was really great. Our view wasn't great, though, because the, the, the whole performance was based on this big screen behind her. And we were looking at her literally from the side. So we could not see the screen at all. I so I watched a video. I watched a performance. I watched a performance on MTV on MTV's YouTube to see it afterwards. Because I did, I did VMAs. A lot of it, they did a lot of it in the metaverse. Like Snoop Dogg and um, Eminem's performance, like half of it was literally, you could only see it in the metaverse. And a lot of the performances had these like visual graphic elements that we in live could not see it but people who watch it online so i watched that one i watched Lizzo's performance at home later i watched the black pink one because the black pink if you look at the black pink performance of this year's vmas they did this thing this graphic thing with like pink smoke or like digital smoke how they made it was really cool it's like a really cool effect they did but some of the things i wanted to see like what it looked like to the audience when nikki was performing or not nikki somebody's performing there was this big oh because they had a big monitor like the big monitor in the in the stadium we can see the big monitor. You can see some of it. And while one of the Latinx performers was performing, there was this like big silver, big booty lady just like on, like, and you remember this? Yeah. Who just like twerking like on the screen or something like that. So stuff like that, I want to see like what it looked like. So I, I did see some of that. Um, and so, yeah, that was really the only time I've ever seen Lizzo perform. I so I, I, I was, she was I'm a judge when I did Good as Hell on Drag Race. And um, so that was really cool because that was like. Did Eureka give her a corset or something? Eureka gave her a corset. I, th- I feel like Eureka said she gave her a corset. And then I feel like she wore the corset on Ellen. I, oh, her! That was to me. That was the moment when Lizzo flipped. When I when she did Juice at Ellen, in my mind, in my and I've got people who like are like like follow every single moment of Lizzo probably like actually know is this, but in my mind, that's when Lizzo like transitioned and she became like. When she was on her way to like superstardom, when she did, when she did Juice at Ellen, I was like, oh, this bitch has fucking made it. I, it was such a cool performance, the way she did like all through the audience and stuff. To me, that was the thing. I was like, yep, this bitch is, she's fucking Lizzo. She's not performing a drag con anymore. She is motherfucking Lizzo. I mean, I've been a fan of Lizzo for, for just a long time. And um, I do think that the song Juice had a, um, the song Juice. I don't know that it was for, for me the Ellen performance, but the but the video for Juice was uh, the the production value was significantly higher. It was the '80s video, yeah, and it, and it, and, it, and it felt like um, there was just a big shift in Lizzo's um, 
I don't know her branding and her with and juice and the quality. Yeah, specifically when the song Juice came yeah. out. Yeah. So it was like something big happened, and all of a sudden she was like this. She was like this massive superstar, and it was it was much less underground. It wasn't like you know where the hell am I? It wasn't like uh, Zebra Cats, who's who's really significant, but still kind of underground. Zebra fucking cats. It's where they went from like that level where you would see like maybe Mariah Lynn, Zebra Cats, and Brooke Handy, Brooke Handy, and then it became a level where you see like Cardi B, Lil Nas X. Those kind of those kind of acts. Yeah, this was great. I'm very excited to see her. Um, I I don't know if she have any. Did you watch um, Watch Out for the Big Girls? I watched like maybe like the first like four episodes, but I haven't finished it yet. So you didn't see the this episode yet? No. Um, but Watch Out for the Big Girls. I fucking loved it. I I binged it in like two days. It was it was a really good show, and I think a bunch of our big girls are on this tour with her. Mm-hmm. If not all of them, a good bit of good bit of them are. And my friend Jayla. Is um is uh one of the big girls? No spoilers. She's. I mean, you, she was on the show. Um, and Jayla's from Portland. She's a fierce trans woman. She is such a great dancer, and she does like backflips and cartwheels. It's like insane. Like she like it's like some really athletic, fierce fucking shit. So hopefully, I see Jayla on that. She like I don't have a number. I can like send her a DM and say like, Hey girl, are you on the show tonight? I tried to DM Lizzo. I didn't try. I did DM Lizzo, and she didn't respond. We've we've DM before uh, on Twitter, um, but I also was like, "I'm coming today," so we'll see if she's like, "Hey, girl, hey." I'm gonna tweet her. I'm yeah. gonna DM too. I follow. She follows me as well. It probably makes it just do. You probably get a fast response if you just tweet. Honestly, that's what I was saying. Tweeting, tweeting. Like, girl, I'm so excited, so excited for the show. Um, you know, she was she, she was on a flight today. Who Lizzo? Yeah, that's not true. Liz was on our flight. You didn't see her? Liz was not on our flight. She was 4A. And she was in, she was really incognito. She's on the like Lil Nas X. Well, I was, I was in C27J, so I, did, I probably didn't. You were you're in the back of the plane. What do you mean back of the plane? You Bob, Bob X Parks. That's what I, that's what I mean. Wow. Yeah. You don't know you come for Rosa Parks like that? Rosa. Rosa Parks. Rosa. Dating Mike Vick, Rosa Barks. Like, oh my god. <laughs> um, Rosa, um, Rosa is the villain in the Daredevil movie, Rosa Michael Duncan Clark. Because <laughs> he was the villain. I get it, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Rosa selling that pussy on Hunt's Point. Rosa Tricks. What? We tricks? Think, yeah, like, like you're a trick. That doesn't rhyme with parks. Oh, wait. You're, it's a rap. <laughs> what, what the fuck? I don't know what just happened. I don't know, I don't know what just happened. happened. <laughs> I don't know what just happened. <laughs> uh, I was like, what? Jacob, your sound is bleeding. No. Uh, but, yeah, wait, why are we, how are we going to rose up? Oh, because you're in the back of the plane. Right. <laughs> Um, this morning, we stroll up to the Delta line today, and um, Bob is like fighting with the gate agent. That was not fighting with. The, that is not true. <laughs> I got to the um to the line, and I said, "Hey, um, I just want to make sure I wanna, I'm not gonna miss my flight. My flight board is in about an hour and five minutes. Um, and there's like a, a little bit of a long line in my my apps. And I was like, is there, can you help me out? He goes, do you have your boarding pass? Let me see. My, my app just was not populating the flight. Like it just was not refreshing. And I was like, ugh, my app's like not working. Can you help me? He goes, I mean, if your app not working, you just gotta get in the line. And I was like, but what if the line takes too long and I, and I don't make it on the flight? He goes, uh, and he's kind of starts going like. Uh, like making those noises and then Monet comes right after me and then Monet goes through and says kind of the same thing to him um but he's just like just get in line and then we were like when it was like okay we're afraid we're really running late we're just wanting wondering we thought being here an hour ahead would be enough time but there's obviously there was like these long delays at the at the ticket desk there were just like these long I don't know there were like three people who just weren't moving yeah five people who just no I mean the customers who just weren't, oh, yeah. who weren't, but they were just, and they, and they were arguing back, not arguing, but they were like conversing back and forth with the, with the, the gate, with the, the, gate uh, uh, the ticket, the desk, ticket agents. The ticket agents. I'll tell you what, after this break. And now we can talk about water. It's been 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so, then, so then, so then, so we're like, oh my God, this line's not moving. So 
Monet goes back to the guy and she's like, can you please help us out? And he goes, you can go down there if you got a, if you got a ticket, but his app ain't working. So he got to stay here. And I was like, I know, but I'm like, my app doesn't work. Can you help me? Like, can you help me? And I was like, so if we go down there, can we like get, cause we, cause it was 510 and this it's 45 minutes before your flight departs. They cut off getting your bags on. And Bob and I, we, yeah, we come from Louisville, but we both have separate gigs after this. So we like have our show bags too. So like we need to like getting, I mean, Dells is pretty good about it. Like if you lose your bag, normally it just put on the next flight and they get it to you in the city, but that's just so much to do with. If you lose your bag, you cannot leave your bag behind. You can't be like, put it on the next flight. You have to get your bag checked when you go. If no, no, but if, if you if you check it late after the after the after the forty five cut off, they'll put on the next flight. That's what I've never had that happen before. Oh, it happened to me. When, when, literally, but we finished tour. Off after all that traveling we did for tour, we finished our tour, and then I had a gig. Bob had a thing. Everything fine from my from my last gig in DC. Coming home, what happens? My bags just don't show up at the fucking baggage cell carousel. And I was like, of all the traffic, of course, on the last day, I'm tired. Wait, but did wanted, you show up late and they put it on the next flight? I was like, I was like up? a minute before cutoff. So I wasn't late, but it was literally a minute. Like, I think the cutoff was like 6.10. They they scanned my thing at like 6.09. But I don't know if you if you, if you you get there after the cutoff, if they will just put your flights. Have you ever had that happen? They you? have. And they put a late check on your on your, on your 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 tags. Mm-hmm. And it, it happened to Patty and I before. Um, and most likely, and it, it misses getting on that one. They just put it on the next flight. But then, but that's also a dangerous game because what if they don't put it? It's, it's, it's just too much. Just having your shit there. So anyway, so Bob and I like running down the thing with no. Our, that's not, so then the guy was like, "Well, but his his app don't work." So like, I don't know. And I was like, "Can you help me though? Like, can you help me make this work?" And he goes, "I told you to get in the line." And I was like, "Oh my god!" So then we just walked down to the other side where you checked ran. yourself in. I walked actually to the other side. You were running. I and then and then I got to this lady and I was like, "Hey, my app's not quite working, so I can't log in over there. Can you help me?" She goes, "Oh." Absolutely. What can I do for you? Yeah. What's your name? Just give me your ID. Yeah. Uh huh. Done. Here's a boarding pass. Here's a this. Let me tag these bags. And that's when I was like, honestly, like I don't ever want to see a straight guy working at an airport ever again. The back of house. Every straight guy at the airport needs to be in some hidden. They need to be a hidden figure. Some hidden job. They need to be in some position where I cannot see them because straight guys. It just feels. And there's some straight guy in the comments. Not me. Not all, but I'm like, y'all niggas don't know how to do customer service, especially at the airport. I've had very good interactions with straight. Uh, I've had, I haven't had like sour, not more than I've had with like women working there or, gay, or gay guys. I have. Not I, more than they standing up for the straight man. What's to up? me, to me, it hasn't been a thing of straight. Sometimes uh, annoying flight people are just bad at their job. I do like a gay flight attendant though, because they are standing, they stand at the front of the little thing for you walking in and they know everyone. Hey Susan, how's how's Michael? He's on soccer practice now, right? Oh, so cute. Oh, hi, Ro. Hello, Rufus. Mm, you're so big. Like, I love those. That is the level I of, love those. That is the level of professionalism and customer service. I want at the airport, especially at 6 a.m. when I'm tired. I just don't want to see any fucking straight guys at the airport unless they're flying or if, like like they're a passenger. Or they're fucking throwing bags on the fucking, on the thing. Don't be a, don't, don't be a straight man flight attendant. I don't want that in my life. I don't, I don't need that. I don't want to see that. I don't want coffee from you. I don't want anything from you. If you're a straight man, you're a flight attendant. Um, it can be a 21 hour flight. I'm, I'm not eating. I'm not drinking. Nothing. You heard it first. I don't, need, I don't need nothing. Spinning his coffee and tell him fuck off. I won't have a coffee. It, you, that coffee will never make its way to me. <laughs> Do you know what I love? I love female flight, um, female, uh, uh. Um, not female. Um, woman. Uh, oh God, wait, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> straight. Bishop, roll it back. Like, what are you trying to say? Can you fucking not be? I like females. <laughs> I need a fe- like. What I love the- when I see women uh, pilots. I love that. I love that. I love that. A uh, female. <laughs> I didn't know. I was, but I, what, I said something earlier. I think I'm. I think I'm yeah. having like a, my brain is fucked up. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you turn it all right, you're like, I need females. <laughs> uh, I like straight men. You know, I almost wore the same hoodie today. We would have been matching today. We would have been. What if footage and could us were 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 hats and dids? We'd be was and worse. Bitch, what the fuck did you just say? If what if shoulders and could us <laughs> were hats and dids, we'd be was and worse. <laughs> It's not like you were casting a spell. It's not like you were casting a spell. It should have would have been one to win him away. You never heard that expression? No, that's some Jacob, you have that's a some Columbus stuff. Not Southern. It's, it's yes. that's Columbus of Georgia saying. Out of all the places you visited, which place has which city has the worst 
and best customer service. Ooh, the worst and best. Atlanta has the worst customer service in America, in my opinion. And I lived in New York City for 12 years. I mean, the only place they can rival uh, the uh, suburbs of Atlanta customer service is possibly, and I mean maybe, uh, Dwayne Reed third shifts in New York City. Uh, when you go to the Dwayne Reed on a third shift in New York City, those motherfuckers so do serious. not care about you. They do not care about anything you're doing. They they do not care about they do not care about their jobs. I'm trying to think as the worst and best. I don't think it's Atlanta. I think you you mean like in terms of the airport or just in general, Jacob? Both, I guess. But I meant in general. Like because there are some airports I hate going to, and like for example, the Detroit airport. I feel like the flight attendants and the people that work, not flight attendants, people that work at the airport, they're, they're very unhelpful. Like, because it is an airport that can get a little confusing. And when you're like, hey, I thought, b- 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 or, or fucking the Minneapolis airport, that is a, that can be a very confusing airport too. Minneapolis? And sometimes, yeah, sometimes you can stop and you need help and they act like, uh, I feel like the, I feel like the people that work at the airport at JFK can be very rude. JFK? <laughs> yes, can be very no. rude. JFK, I think it can be great very rude rude they can be very rude i have experience at laguardia laguardia i'd be like y'all niggas don't want to work <laughs> like what are you doing why are you like what is going on it, it, that is they're all they're all quiet quitting at laguardia whenever i go they're like i like, don't know what is happening up in here um but for me and maybe it just come from it and it's specifically clayton county Clay, i mean like clayton county customer service y'all it is it is insane like like going to a fast food restaurant in clayton county is so insane it is so bananas and it never fails. It never fails to blow my mind. And I mean, every single time. I don't know if that's the KFC story. But me and my brother went to KFC. And um, love that chicken from Popeyes. We went to KFC though. And then um, we walked in, and the guy was like, nah, man, y'all gotta go into the drive thru. And we were like, we can't just order right here. We're here. We can't order here. He goes, nah, man, you gotta go to the drive thru. No, no customers inside. And we're like, was it COVID? No, it was, it was, they were just, it was just a rule they made. And I was like, okay. So we got back in the car, we drive around and I was like, hi, can I get the, um, the, the Nashville hot? And the lady was like, we ain't got, we ain't got, we ain't, I can't get the Nashville hot today. We ain't got them. And I was like, okay, okay. Well, um, so then my brother ordered and then I was like, can I get a number 12? We ain't got that. I said, you don't have the number 12? We ain't got that. And I was like, wait, because my brother ordered a chicken sandwich and I was like, well, well, 12 is a chicken sandwich. So I'm assuming you have this. Or was a 10 or something. And she goes, we don't have 12 wings. We don't have wings. I said, I didn't ask for 12 wings. I asked for a number 12 or a number 10. I can't remember which one it was. And she goes, oh, we got that. And I was like, okay, can I have that, please? Yeah. And I, can I get the Nashville hot sauce on it, please? We don't have that. And I said, but it's on your menu. Like, I'm looking at it on the menu. And the guy goes, oh, you want the Nashville sauce? Yeah, we got that. And I was like, okay, can I, can I have that? Yeah, yeah, we'll put that on the side. We pull up to the window. We pay for our food. And then she goes... Y'all got to drive back around and come inside to get your food. <laughs> and I said, I said, what? She goes, y'all got to drive around and you got to come in and get your food. And then my brother said, y'all on some bullshit. And she goes, how are we on bullshit? And he goes, y'all, ju- we were just inside. We were just inside the store, right? And then y'all told us that we have to go to the drive-thru. So we did. And then we got through the drive-thru. You didn't have anything we wanted, but you actually ended up having everything we wanted. You just said you didn't have it, even though you actually had it. And then we get to the window, and we pay you, and then you tell us we have to drive back around and go back inside to pick up the food. You don't see all this bullshit? She goes, I don't see how that is bullshit. And I was like, this is in, this is madness. And I walk around inside, of course, and I go to grab my um, my food, and they just, you know, they just hand it. It's kind of just, they just kind of give it to you without, like... Saying anything. That's kind of how they like they they drop your drinks off and they'll be like, "This is how this is how they did it." The Dunkin' Donuts. The Dunkin' Donuts. You mean KFC? No, this is I, I I went in more than one place. They go. Okay. But they also put it like imagine. And like it's a big counter at Dunkin' Donuts, so imagine it is so far. It's like they put it at the very edge of their side of the counter. Mm-hmm. Like it's like it's like weeble wobble and about to fall off. So you have to reach all the way over. It is it is like every time I go, I'm like, this is insane how they do customer service here. This is wild. I don't mean. I mean, I I, I did have a, a sour experience at the Gus Fried Chicken. I guess Gus famous fried chicken in, in Atlanta. Andy and I went. 
and they were open until 10 o'clock and we got there like 9 30 which is a half an hour before they close and then we went to get chicken and then we ordered our food they didn't want they didn't have like several things which is fine we got something we said i'm like oh y'all can't sit in here and eat and i was like huh like y'all can't sit in here and eat and i was like but what time do you close we close at 10 what time was it 9 30 he's like y'all can't sit in here and eat so i just went outside i just ate on the curb so that was very annoying. Wasn't that so, wasn't that so much where, 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 where the lady was like not nice to y'all because she saw your little gayness? What was it? Oh my god! Did, did I tell a story on here? I don't remember. So you're getting you're getting the Atlanta. That is the that is the Atlanta customer service. Well, I will say this: this lady was clear religious. So Andy and I we were going to not. I said crumbles, not crumbles. Jacob. I think your mic is still on. Um. It's not crumble. What's the other one that does cupcakes? They have the vending machine. Sprinkles. It was sprinkles. And they have in the Atlantic Square Road Mall, there's a sprinkles. So Andy and I are walking in. We're holding hands and we're like, two people in front of us were like in line and we're like getting up to the counter. And then, you know, we're like doing, kissing each other. I'm well, not making out, like, like, like being cute, or whatever. So we get to the thing. I'm like, hi. Um, it was, get a, I was getting cupcakes. It was Patty's birthday. I was getting him a dozen cupcakes. So I was like, can I have an assortment of your, of 12 of your cupcakes? She, and then she, she does, she has not looked up from her monitor once at me. She's just like, um, which, which flavors you want? And I was like, um, it doesn't really matter. You can do any, any you want, just as long as there's one or two red velvet. She was like, okay. She walked back and Andy was like, why is she being so weird? Do you think it's because we're gay? I was like, no, it's not because we're gay. Or she probably just tired, girl. She she been working all day. She wanted to go to go the fuck home. She's that's probably what it is. So then she comes back. She just still doesn't look up. She's like, hey, here, here your cupcakes, and they just told her put in your card. And I was like, okay, thank you. And then Andy taps me, and he's like, and I was like, what can you? Speak? Yeah, he was like her hat. So I look up. Her hat said C I A on the side says. Pray for Jesus or something Jesus. And the CIA was like, Christ. Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer or Christ in action, something like that. And she was clearly like a very militant religious person. And she's the head of a crunchy, ignorant asshole. <laughs> and she's very put off by how gay we were. Because then as we left, the next person, she's like, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Welcome to Sprinkle. But that, I'm telling you, Monet, that is the, the, in my experience, that is such an Atlanta customer service experience. I always say, when, when they say it's Southern hospitality, bitch, they are not talking about Atlanta. That, that, that sprinkles, there is a like protective shield over over the metro Atlanta area when they sprinkle like Southern hospitality and it just does not make it to Atlanta. Well, it's so funny thing in New York, doesn't. I feel like every time, literally when I was just recently in New York, I went to a store, like a just store to get, I don't know where was that, some store, uh, like a Target. <laughs> I needed to get like a razor. When we were there for the thing, I needed a razor. And then and they, and New York people to me, they just, bitch, they, they don't really look at you. They don't really talk to you. They're talking to everybody else on this shit. They're like, Jaquan, they never stop playing. And you, I'm like, but you're right here. <laughs> you're right here. They talk over your head. <laughs> I hate that. New York, New York does it, especially the winery, over your head. I'm like, do you guys have the razors? Um, they over there somewhere. Marquise, come on. I got to go on my break. Come on. Well, I, I hate is when you when you uh, go into the Wayne Reed in New York City and um, and they always ask you, you uh, you ask them if they have something, they they always say no, they 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 don't they 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 might look around for three seconds. I remember one time going in and being like, do you guys have any kind of? I was a Dwayne Reed, y'all. I was like, do you if you don't know, because Wayne Reed's a New York thing. It's like it's like it's a, a CBS, Walgreens. It's, Walgreens. it's owned by Walgreens. It is literally just a Walgreens. Yeah, yeah. It's Walgreens called Wayne Walgreens. Reed. Yeah. So you walk into the way and read and you go, can I get, um, I said, can I get some Benadryl? And she goes, I said, I said, do you guys have Benadryl? And she goes, Benadryl? No. <laughs> I said, you don't have Benadryl? She goes, we don't have, it's called Benadryl? No, we don't have Benadryl. I was like, I was like, you don't, this pharmacy doesn't have Benadryl. She goes, you can check. So I go back and look. I have so much Benadryl on my hands. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is Benadryl. She goes, oh, I guess we do have Benadryl. I but, love it. But ne- you love that? <laughs> like, it's, so, but it's so fucking veggie. <laughs> like, I was, I was, and then, and then they be working, fully have their iPhone in their hand, they're corded, they're corded headphones in their pocket, having, listening to music or talking to somebody else. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. We'll be back. I'm a very busy woman and I'm always working on a different project, but one of my favorite things to do is make music. Now you've all heard my newest song, Bitch Like Me, Um, but believe me, I'm just getting started. I'm always interested in how other artists compose and produce their own songs and I've gotten really into 
masterclass for learning about how different artists make their music. Alicia Keys has a class that I absolutely loved. It was very, very fun and informative, and I was blown away by the depth and the knowledge and the quality of the experience. Um, now, with the masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to cook from Gordon Ramsay, improve your acting skills with Natalie Portman, or you can learn writing from Issa Rae with over 100 classes from a range of world-class instructors. Things that you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. Masterclass is accessible on your phone, web, or smart TV, offering classes on a wide variety of topics, all taught by world-class masters at the top of their field. Learn how to do anything from finish your screenplay to make Michelin star-worthy scrambled eggs. Whatever you're interested in, there's a masterclass for you. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every class and as a sibling rivalry listener you can get 15% off an annual membership go to masterclass.com slash rivalry now that's masterclass.com slash rivalry for 15% off masterclass Debbie Fully at work phone in hand listen to their music the one at one headphone in the other one dangling that shit is just funny to me I do not think it's funny. I think it's very funny. <laughs> that does not, it does not tickle me. I don't think it's humorous. It is not, it is not funny. To, to experience, when, when I'm experiencing it, it does not feel oh, funny. Oh, in the moment, it's not funny. When I sit sit back now and think about it, I'm like, that is such a New York thing. That is so New York. It's not just New York, though. Like, I was I was talking to Nick the other day, and um, Nick, who? Nick um, Smith. Nick Gurr? Oh, Nick Smith, not Gurr. Got it. Okay. Continue. I was talking with Nick Smith the other day, uh-huh. and we were walking, and I was like, um, the last name should be Girdley. That would Nick be Girdley? Niggardly? Yes, one name. But anyway, so second on the phone. Wait, no, why Girdley? Just Girdley. Because, it, because it's less obvious. Anyway, <laughs> I was talking, I was talking to um to to Nick Smith on the phone, and I was and I was I was trying to buy my mom an Apple TV. And I walked to the, to the Walmart and I said, This is in Atlanta. And I said, Do you guys have an Apple TV? And the guy said, Apple TV. <laughs> now, this is the guy standing in the electronic section, but he's plain clothes. So I just thought he was a customer. And I said, Yeah, Apple TV. Well, you asked the customer if they have an Apple TV. I asked the employees, and this guy just turned around oh, got and it. just said, Apple TV. And I was like, Yeah, Apple TV. Do you guys have an Apple TV? He goes, Apple TV? <laughs> I said, Yes, Apple TV. He goes, Apple TV. And I said, Yes, we are both saying Apple TV. Apple TV. And he put on his vest later on, but he worked there. <laughs> and he was like, oh, Apple TV. And I was like, yes. And we just kept, it was like, it was like a, a 30 seconds of us just saying Apple TV back and forth. No, it was not that long. And he was well, like, he was like oh, long. I thought Apple made a TV. And I was, and my pro- thought was like, you work in the electronics department. You don't know what Apple TV is. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold you for that. But like, what? So he goes, oh, Apple TV. Hold on. Hold on. And then the guy was like, which, which, which one you want? And I was like, well, which one? Like, which ones do you like? Which ones do you have? And he goes, I don't know. And I was like, I want the one that you can talk into. I need the one that you can like speak into the with, the, with, the, with, the, with the microphone. And he goes, all right. And he goes back and he kind of grabs him and he just like like p- pushes him toward me. And I'm like, which one is the one that you can talk into? He goes, I don't know. And then he's like, and he's just like here. So I'm like, okay. So I'm reading them myself. And then I'm like, what's the difference between these? Like, which one's better? And he's just like, I don't know. Like, 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 like I'm bothering him. I don't know. And I was like, oh my God. Well, this guy. these people, they don't really know the products. Like they know that they sell Bitch, a- read the box. I mean, just, but like you're in the electronics department, bitch. Just but what read I think it is Walmart box. and Target, they don't train these people to do that. Like they they stick them. He, he probably this may have been this man's first time working in electronics. Normally probably works in the baby detection. And what I don't think Walmart and Target train them on like each sure. individual thing. Sure. Whoop de whoop. They don't they don't train them. They probably don't. The way that I got answers was what he could have done, which is I literally just read, I was just like, I'll just I'll just read the box then while you just stand here. Okay. So I'm reading, I'm reading the boxes. And then I'm like, and then he is, I, then I was like, okay, I want this one. And then he takes the other one out of my hand and starts walking away. And I say, I also need a TV. I need a TV. He goes, you want a TV too? And I was like, <laughs> yes, I would like a TV, please. Can I please have a TV? <sighs> Which one you want? And I was like, I was like, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going, I'm, I want to, I want to fight this guy. I want that one, please. And he's like, oh my God, hold on. So then he goes to the back. Did he say, oh my God? Yes. He goes to the, Nick, no. was, Nick was on the phone with me. I was, I was like, I remember being like, I'm so glad someone else is here to experience this because someone's going to think I'm exaggerating. This is so. He said, oh my God. No, he said, he said, oh my God, oh, hold on. <laughs> That's what he said. He didn't go, oh my, he went, oh my God, hold on. 
So then he went and he got a TV and he put it in the cart. And then he was like, all right, we got to go to the front. So I, but, but he took, I mean, he took both the Apple TV out of my hand because you can't walk to the front of the Apple TV because people steal them, I guess. Mm-hmm. So he's like, there go your TV. It's in the cart. So I'm like pushing the cart. And he's like, and he's like, got the Apple TV. And he's just like walking in front of me, but he's walking so fast. <laughs> all of a sudden, he has all this energy. He is like speed racing through Walmart. And I have a massive TV trying to get through Walmart to catch up to him. He makes it to the self checkout before I do. I don't know where he put the Apple TV. And he he made it there, dropped it off, and just left. And I don't know where the Apple TV is. I have no clue where anything is. And then I had to, then I asked the lady who was up at the front a. Um, a a very lovely lady. She might have been like maybe in her forties, and she was like very. I was like, this woman is who I need. Thank you. I'm so glad I ran into you. And she was like, hey baby, what can I do for you? And I was like, I just I'm trying to find the TV. She goes, oh, I can find the TV. Hold on one second, honey. She's like, help me find the TV. But I think it's just it's just the it's the, it's the it's the young ones, and it's always the the straight ones. Not always. That's not true. But often, I just think I want to see straight guys in customer service. <laughs> You, 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 I heard it, Bob. Hey, straight guys. You know, but you know what straight guys love? What? Water. Now, have you ever met a straight guy that doesn't like water? I'm sure at some point I probably met a straight guy who doesn't like water, but I haven't done a whole lot of investigating. I don't, um, I don't, I don't, I don't know that many straight guys. Well, you hit the right thing. Okay. Now, water as a natural resource, in my opinion, water is one of the most dangerous natural resources that we have. Would, would you agree with that statement? Water can. What do you mean by that? Like when, when with floods, with tsunamis, like water can do like really, really, really bad damage to our planet, to our just our. Oh my god, I was using your leg as. I know it was not comfortable (laughs) for me, so I moved my leg. (laughs) Yes, water can be very, very damaging. Yes. Have you ever been a flood? Um, I've been in a hurricane before, but I've never been in a flood. What hurricane? Um, Sandy. I want to say Andy. Ironically. Um, or Eileen, it was something. When, it was something that hit. Uh, it hit the Gulf of Mexico when I lived in Alabama. Uh, so even though Alabama, even though I was not on the coast, but the hurricane reach goes. It oh, yeah. reaches very very far, and we had like a lot of power lines knocked down and and a lot of flooding, um, a lot of power outages. This was like I was maybe you know, I was pretty young, but never in Atlanta. Oh, also, we both lived through Hurricane Sandy. And I lived through Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy. Uh, I was working at this when I was dating this guy in Brooklyn called his name was Joel. Oh my God. He was this Puerto Rican guy in Brooklyn and he had his whole brownstone. Well, he had the first of, of a brownstone to himself. And I was working at that time at the Holiday Inn JFK and we were dating for like a month and a half and then Hurricane Sandy happened and I was spending all my time with him and we were like, we like bunkered up together. I guess I wasn't doing drag then. Was I doing drag when Hurricane Sandy happened? What year was Hurricane Sandy? Because I don't remember the year. I was Hurricane Sandy was 2012. Oh, so I was like just starting to happen. It was around Halloween. It was around Halloween. And and so you were obviously doing drag. Did you get caught? Because so Hurricane Sandy was a big hurricane that hit the eastern seaboard, obviously. And it came to New York City. And it had knocked power out from like 33rd Street all the way down to the bottom of Manhattan. So people who were having to be there when it happened, they like were, people walked from 33rd Street all the way up to Harlem in, in the Bronx, if you live there. Did you did that happen to you? Well, I didn't live in I didn't All right, you didn't live there. Yet. I live I lived I live I lived I, I didn't live in I never lived below 33rd Street ever once in my life. But I'm saying but people who were like because it happened the storm was no, out during the day. Yeah, but I mean no one walked to my house. I mean I lived in hundred I lived in 106th Street at the time. And um it was pretty it was pretty calm uptown. I remember like going downtown, going downstairs during Hurricane Sandy to go buy a sandwich from the bodega next door. And this guy was like jogging past me. And then when I like got on my phone or on the to watch on the TV to see what was happening on Lower Manhattan, I was like, that's hap-. like I saw people's living rooms were flooded. I was like Blackout. I know people's the entire homes like were mm-hmm. flooded. I was like, what is happening in in Lower Manhattan? Because Upper Manhattan that was just not was just having a complete even though it was like 10 miles away, was having a completely different experience. I saw people who um uh, I saw entire train stations underwater, yeah. completely submerged. It was wild. South Ferry. I th- was I think South Ferry was completely submerged underwater. Um, because you because the one used to go to South Ferry because mm. we used to say the drag name one to South Ferry. Um, but then the one train for a while only went director, so the, the drag name changed to One Director. Um, but one direction. That's hilarious. Um, 
but yeah, it, it was a really, uh, it was a really wild time because uptown we were just having such a different experience. But I was working at bars that were, I was working at Barracuda and Boots and Saddle and um, I think maybe Pieces at the time, maybe. So all those gigs were like not happening. Yeah, for like uh, I don't know how long, maybe like a couple of weeks, maybe a month. I don't know why I got on the topic of Joel, of Joel, but he was um, oh, because I had stayed at his house. So like in like our this like love fest we were having, I had no idea because Brooklyn wasn't. I mean, the part of Brooklyn he was it was in a uh, Crown Heights area. So the part of Brooklyn was that didn't really affect it that bad. Far Rockaway got decimated. Yeah, Far Rockaway. Because Far Rockaway is like literally like it, it's like it's like a little Gulf over there. It's actually isn't it Queens? Yeah, it's Queens. Far Rockaway is Queens. Um, so, and like this thing, I, I had like bunkered out his house for like three, four days. Like I, I, I had a call out of work. It's like, I can't, I can't get to work. I'm stuck. And then, so when I left this like nest and his, at his place, then I realized, oh shit, it was like a real storm. Cause I had in my lifetime, I had never experienced a storm in New York besides a snowstorm. Um, I never experienced like a hurricane storm. In and did New Joel, did, did Joel drink water? Joel did like to drink water. Joel also... He did. This is my first introduction into someone who did like. Well, that's not true. But he smoked like a lot of weed, like a lot of weed. Joel was like a weed is head, it, like a pothead. It, you say pothead? Yeah, I said it because I said weed head, and all of, we did the whole thing on the podcast about pothead weed head thing. He was like a really, and I was oh like, God, wow, he said pothead. Um, but Joel did like water. He 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 was a very big fan of water. <laughs> now in St. Lucia, obviously St. Lucia is is in the Caribbean, so they have hurricanes that pass St. Lucia, but they have often. I don't know if if you will even be familiar with the storm it's term, um, tropical depressions. You know what that is? I've heard the term before. It's like a Where very. you come around? I kind of get a little. Bit. So was it? Sitting. <laughs> Have a tropical depression. That's funny. Tropical depression. They're like a they're like a less serious tropical storm. So I think Jacob, maybe you can look this up. I think it goes from like a storm to a tropical depression. Tropical storm. Can I say real quick before we talk about this? Um, before we go into uh, Brit, bringing Al Roker. Um, <laughs> we not, we ever going to this uh, Lizzo's concert at an arena, and it's at eight o'clock. And Monet looked at me today and said, "What time should we go? Seven? Should we, what time should we head over?" 745. <laughs> Y'all, does that that's crazy. That that sounds wild, right? Be, okay, but while we're missing out a very crucial information, uh, Lady Art, the, the woman who drove us here in the Uber, she was literally like, Oh, you like you like two to four minutes away from the venue. But we should we we should, in my opinion, when you go to see a show, especially a live show, you should try to be there. Be there, not head out, be there. At least 30 minutes before the show. And that's in like a 200, 300 seat theater. This is over a thousand seats in an arena. Um, Yeah, sure. But we're like two to two to four minutes away. I mean, whatever. I mean, it, I, okay, we're going to leave early. I don't think it's that. You're acting like, I, I said, let's, let's, let's take, let's go murder Lizzo. I don't think that I, what I said, <laughs> carried the same weight as less murder Lizzo. Now, I think you're the one being extreme. <laughs> so I think it is wild to be like, we should leave it. Like, if we left at 845, let's say it took five minutes to get there. We get there at, I mean, we get there at 750. We now have 10 minutes to get from the, from the park, from the, the edge of a stadium to our seats in a stadium with like, with like 3,000, 4,000 people in it. Yeah. Yes. Is bitch. that how you go to stuff? Is that how you did ACL? Did you go to Scissor's show 10 minutes before? Oh, no, I was there an hour before. So you do understand. <laughs> no, so you do I, understand. I, just, I don't understand. I was just saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you bitch, are you drunk, ho? You went an hour before. How, how, how far like, is Vance you go see Lil Nas X? Do what? Lil Nas X. Oh, I got that he was already performing because we were at. Diplo. And how early did you get to Diplo? No, Diplo was at, the, we were at some of the one else. How early did you get to the people you were I don't know, to? the only, I was late to everyone, bitch, I was mad because we ended up missing, I only saw the last two songs that Jasmine Sullivan set because we was fucking late because we had lunch before and the bitch who was our waitress was taking mad long so I ended up missing all of Jasmine Sullivan's set. It's I'm like, so it's tired. It's like running late to concerts is kind of a thing for you. It's like you relate to uh, Diplo, you relate to uh, when you Lil Nas X, you relate to Jasmine Sullivan. Well, when, when you had I a bitch, festival. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to drop you on some shit. You are late to everything. Now, SZA, I was there, bitch, early squirrely, honey. That was, I was. I'm late. trying to put you on some game. You guys, you can't be going late. <laughs> you are, that was so wild. I remember being like, what? 
Isn't that why? Okay, you see, your mom was acting like I said some crazy shit. Like, mom acting like I said uh, uh, water don't exist or some shit. Yeah, I, this, this, the extreme between <laughs> me, between me saying going to a concert, getting there 10 minutes before to get to a stadium seat and saying less murder Lizzo and water doesn't exist. Does that really seem like a correlation? Because, mom, because you're like, that is, I can't believe Monet said that. Oh my God. Because it's such poor, it's just such poor planning. I just, especially someone, because you, you work in theater. You work in show. You do shows. You put on shows. Yeah. That's why it's such an odd concept to me because you, what time do you tell people to come to your show? If the show's at eight, what time do you tell them to be there? When I, before I was a, uh, working, how we work now, when I was just working in the bar, I'll tell my show starts at 10, bitch, get there at 1030. Because we know this show's never start on time. They're your show, bitch. Your show, Bob, bitch. first of all, I, Bob, your I used shows, to come bitch. and see you on Tuesday your nights. Shows, <laughs> your bad bitch. drag queen show was supposed your to start at 11 o'clock. Lies. I, I, I call I, Chris Dunbar right now. I'm calling Chris Dunbar. Oh, my I God. I famously had a saying in my show. I famously I'm had a saying Chris in Dunbar. Barracuda. I said, I'm the show Chris was Dunbar. at 10 o'clock. Not Barracuda. I said I know, Tuesday I'm, night. I'm, 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 you're not listening. I, I, I famously had a saying where I said, my show is at 1030. If you show up at 1031, you've missed the first minute of the show, bitch. I, I famously said, Hold call on, Chris Dunbar. Hold on. Call him. First on, first on, your, 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 your bad, bad drive. I mean, your Monday night show did not start at 1030. It started at midnight. I know what time my show started. Right. So 1030. So call Chris Dunbar. I'm calling Chris Dunbar right now because you're so full. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to taste so good. Say, Bob start late. Hold on. I, I'm not even going to give him any lead up. I'm going to ask him just a generic question. I'm going to say, hey, Chris. Um, What time was Bob's show supposed to start on Tuesday? What time did it start? Did, or did Bob's show start on time? Do you think that's a fair question? Yes, yeah, however you want to ask. I'm not here to tone you. To tone you. Your well, call has been forwarded to an you can call. You can call Mitch Freno. You can call right. Mitch Freno and I work at the I know, I, I, We know for a fact Monster did not start on time. Right. Oftentimes. Cool. Call Mitch Freno. Was Bob always late? To I did not say late? that. That's Girl. not what I said. Ring a ding ding. That's bitch. not what I said, bitch. Ring-a-ding-ding. And you know that's not what I said. Ding. Let me answer the phone for you. <laughs> Hello. Good evening, Mitch Farino. This is Monet Exchange. You're on the podcast. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Good. Mitch, I just have a question, okay? On Sunday nights at, at the Monster for Look uh-huh. Queen, what time did the show start? Did they start on time or, or did they, or did we wait? Like, what is, what, how do you remember those shows happening? Okay, this is back in, we st- okay, we started Look Queen in 2014, so this mm-hmm. is a stretch. Um, mm-hmm. I remember... I feel like we did several shows throughout the night, right? Like yeah, we did. We did, we did like three shows throughout the night, usually three or four. Uh-huh. Right. And I don't believe, I mean, there's been several hosts because the last hosts were like Tara and Dusty, but the original. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let, let, let Mitch talk. But the, <laughs> the original host, when it was you guys, when it was Bob hosting, I don't think, I think. I don't think we started on time. I, I would be surprised if we did. Yeah, I would too, Mitch. Thank you so much now for taking your time. Ask, Thank now, you now, so Mitch, much. Let me, now, let me ask Mitch some questions. <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't hang up. Don't, don't put it in the air so we can hear him. Let me hold the phone. Now, now Mitch, <laughs> oh Monet is trying to do this insinuation God. that I was starting my shows late all the time. <laughs> I Mo- nah, 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 nah. Monet was like, at, 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 at industry, you was always late. Who was the first queen? Who, about, who was the first queen at Look Queen every week? You, oh, you, you were there. You would take the stanchions and set up the stanchions, and uh-huh. like you were moving around set, set pieces mm. and like getting everything set like by ten o'clock. Yes, we agree. Mm. Okay, mm. that is not the same as starting the show. Now no. you are now. You are, if, you are, now if I was waiting for someone like Monet Exchange to show up, what's I, it, and I had to wait because she was part of the show. You were moving. You were moving. I didn't interrupt you. 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 Now, if I was waiting for someone like Monique Shane to show up, which you've admitted you relate to your shows all the time, right? <laughs> I tell this to my shows all the time. Is not what I said. So, um, the, so the question, is, so the question is, do I did I have a reputation for starting my shows late? That's my question. I don't think you have a reputation for starting your shows late. To, to answer that question, no, you don't have a reputation. No, we for agree. That. No one said you had a reputation for starting your shows late. No one literally ever said that. So, what were you saying then? I was saying that I said that your Tuesday night show would start late. Bad drag when the show was supposed to start at ten thirty. You know that show did not start until midnight. And again, that's not that's because not of, true. Yes, that's not because of you. That was because of other. That's other not true. That's not anyway, true. Anyway, Mitch, thank you so that's much. We true. love you very much. 
Love you guys. Bye. Bye. That is categorical. So y'all see Bob just moving is, the goalposts. That is categorical. Well, anyway, you, you just said they it's will, categorically false. That's on the call, Chris Dunbar. Yes, it is. But categorically anyway, false. We, well, you you think one thing, I think one thing. The only person that can answer is Chris Dunbar. So next time on the podcast, maybe a Patreon exclusive. We'll talk I to think Chris. I Dunbar. can answer more than you because I did the show and I was there for most of it. No, you weren't. I was I there was, for I was there for every show, and I, I will come to your show very often. And I was show, there for every show. That show seldom started on time. I was, maybe there, I was once, there for every maybe single once show. Once every Mercury and retrograde, you saw it on time. Most of the time, not. When they speak for your shows, bitch, bitch I was speak there for your shows. Anyway, so let's let's move on. I cannot wait for you to call Quincy. I well, can't wait. Don't you? Know, I'll talk about what I'm talking. I talk about, bitch. You don't control the flow of the show. You don't decide when we move bitch, on. Neither do you. We're shit. all we're, we do it together. Yeah, exactly. So you're a little. Let's move on. Bitch, it's not, there's no concurrence. So anyway. There's, so there's there's no concurrence. So speak for yourself. <laughs> oh my God. Speak for your shows. So, so being late. Rain. I would say we have rain. I'm not talking about fucking tropical storm. I don't want, I'm, I'm not. Hold on. I'm not talking about tropical Hold depression. Hold on. This is you the, are my tropical depression. This is I'm the, not entertaining you discussing tropical this depression. This is the, well, well, this is what I want to talk about. Well, well, I'm talking about something else on your half of the, the microphone. The, okay, I'm, I'm on my side. Okay, so, great. So talk I'm about on my your, side too. Talk about your tropical depression. So I think see, they go bit, between. Go ahead. Like between what? A little drizzle. bit of rain, and then some drizzle, and then what? And then we have what? Tropical depression? I would say drizzle, rain. Bitch, um, you don't even know what you're talking a about. storm, tropical depression, tropical storm, hurricane. Money, shut the fuck up. What are you? <laughs> what are you? What are you <laughs> we're talking about. What? You're talking about tropical depression. about water. You are talking about tro- tropical depression. <laughs> you, bitch. This, this, what, would, what would you say your favorite brand of bottled water is? <laughs> I don't have a favorite brand of bottle water. I just don't like spring water. <laughs> what, you don't like spring water? I do not like spring water. Isn't that most of them? No. There's some distilled waters. There is glacier water. And there's spring water. So what bottles of water do you like to drink? I'll drink like uh, Voss, Dasani. Um, I'll drink... Isn't Dasani spring water? Dasani is distilled water. Interesting. Um, I'll drink... Uh, those are the waters that I tend to tend to prefer. I just don't like like Deer Park is spring water. Um, those are different kind of waters. No, oh, Dasani is purified water. Dasani purified. I like Smart Water. I like Life Water. I like I like Essentia. I guess I never paid attention what's spring, what's blah, 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 blah. Honestly, to be very honest, I do not taste The only water that tastes different to me is the Nestle water and... Um, Evian. Evian like has a different taste. Well, you also everything else pretty much tastes the same like, thing. You think that tequila tastes like vodka, so your taste buds are have no discern ability to discern. Maybe maybe that's the truth. But I think that I think that the only those are the only two that have like, oh my god, we have a Nestle one right here. Nestle and Evian, they just have a different taste. Like, do, do you agree Evian tastes weird? It tastes like it's weird. Wait, can Monet Bob, can we have Monet do a blind taste test right now? I or mean, all, all, all we have is Nestle. And we have tap water. Oh, I thought you said you had two. No, no, no. We just have... A, uh, and we have tap water. But I don't... I ain't drinking no Indiana tap water. What's wrong with Indiana tap water? New York City has the best tap water in the world. Did you know that? Well, not in the world. New York City has one of the best tap water in the States. In the state? In the States. Oh. In the States. Um, I also... Um, I have drank tap water my entire life. I drink tap water all the time. All con- con- I, I'm not one of the folks like, I don't drink... No, I... People, in my mind, people who act like Dasani is gross, you're doing too much. Like, you need to chill out. Yeah, I don't, I don't taste. Dasani like, doesn't need, taste need, weird. Like, y- y'all who act like Dasani is unhealthy, but then you chug a bottle of Coke, and then you do a bump of K, and then you eat um, and then you eat a bagel, slathered in butter, you're doing too much. It's Dasani bottle water. You're, you're, you're well, literally doing say, too much. Because if people see it has salt, and then people are like, mm, I can taste the salt. Like, I I, I just can't They're doing Dasani. too much. They're full yeah. of shit. I, I do not believe them. Now, it's, I don't think it's as... It's as I, no, granted, I... I it's not as extreme as like saying all bottled water tastes the same because I do not think all bottled water tastes the same. But acting like Dasani tastes salty, y'all niggas lying. Unless these people are just hypersensitive. They're tasting some shit that we don't taste. You know, like, you know people who are super smellers? No, I don't know any super smellers. I don't know super smellers. Like, they smell everything. They're like... Does they term super smellers? Yeah, that's the that's a, that's a thing a lot of people talk about, super smellers and super, super tasters. I mean, I, I don't categorize myself as a, as a super smeller. I feel like I am sensitive to certain things, but... Like, I know some people, like, Patty is notoriously has a very bad smell. Patty's like, I don't smell anything. He's like, I'm like, but I was like, you, you smell that? He's like, what? I don't smell anything. 
Uh, Patty knows he has bad sense of smell, but some people are super. You never heard that term, super smellers? No. Work. I don't have a great sense of smell, but um, there are certain smells that upset me. I don't like the smell of uh, candles, with specific candles like things like vanilla and like. Uh, I, I don't like the way that Lush smells. I don't like the way that Bath and Body Works smells. Cucumber melon. No, it's, it's just, been a warm, 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 warm vanilla sugar. Like the way the the whole there's too many is too, there's too many smells in there. There's a lot of smells. It makes my stomach better. hurt. Like I literally get like bubble guts and I get sick when I go into those stores. It's just something about the way that the, 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 the. Do you think that's tied to your vision because you have vision like because you know your senses are they say like if one sense is weak or the other ones are super heightened. Do you think maybe because like you have some vision stuff like your smell is like really is a little warped as well? That doesn't make sense. Because my vision is bad, my smell will be better. I'm saying because but that that you, like that's why you smell it so intensely. That's what that's that's. But what I makes don't you have sick. I don't have a great sense of smell though. I just for that particular smell makes me sick. But I don't have a great sense of smell. Well, you do you have do you have bad vision? Do you have what? What's your? I also what's your don't vision have. Number? I also don't. I don't know, but I don't have horrible vision. I I can I can go by without. I've lost my glasses. I have not worn my glasses in probably two months now. Which is supposed to wear glasses. So that means you. Do. I've worn glasses. When I was four years old, but I've also gone years at a time without wearing glasses. I I, I didn't wear glasses the first like. I think eight years you knew me. Right, so maybe you're doing. So, but, but if you that means, but that means you have bad vision, right? You have glasses, right? I I, I I I have impaired vision, but I don't have like horrible vision. I can see very well. I can read everything on the screen. I can read every single word. I I do have. I am visually impaired technically, but I do not have bad vision. <laughs> I am visually impaired technically. But I have great vision. What I'm saying is, I, no, what I'm saying is, I wear glasses, but I, but I don't, I, I, I don't, I'm not legal. I don't, I don't need them. I'm not one of the folks who's like, what is? That? I can't like. I'm not one of those folks. Those people have really sometimes I will put, I will do this sometimes, <laughs> but I can read things. I didn't wear glasses for the first eight for the eight first eight. Years I was like, sometimes years. I have to be like, but well, I can see. Well, that's different. People do different <laughs> things. Like for example, also as you get as you get older, your vision just changes. Like for example, as you get older, you might need readers, but you don't need. Seeing glasses. I mean, I have never had to do this sort of thing. I'm not, I can probably because you're not that age yet. Some people just some people as you get older, your vis your your eyes are getting technically worse. I get out, but it's not. Words. But it's not because you need seeing glasses. It's because you need reading glasses. I mean, I I, I get that the body deteriorates and certain things just don't work as easy the older you get. But I'm saying I've never been a point in my life in my 32 years where I have to be like, um, people be like. Like Kamika, since I know Kamika since middle school, Kamika has to do this to see. She's like, listen, so she has to go. And I'm like, Kamika, bitch, put all your glasses on. She's like, Kevin, no. She's like, what that sign say? Well, sometimes carrying around glasses just to read a thing, like if I'm wearing like wearing glasses can kind of become a hindrance. So am I gonna wear glasses all day? Or am I just gonna go stance coffee? That is a lot easier than just wearing glasses all day because my vision is not so bad that I need glasses all day. But if I want to read one thing, I'll just quickly close one eye and then be like, oh, actually, I never put it this close. I can't read that at all. I usually put it about right here and I go, oh. So that's what I was saying, though, because like your vision is a bit, a bit. um... But but I'm also saying I don't have a strong sense of smell. I, so I, I so because my vision is impaired, I would have a stronger sense of smell, but I don't. Well, have I mean, with smell. your color thing, because like you have like that thing with your with color colors, maybe that's why like the one thing about smells like really upsets you, like it makes you like it fucks you up, I like don't. like it like it, it makes you go to shit. You said that it fucks up your stomach. I don't think I I, I don't think that because I'm colorblind, um, the smell of Bath and Body Works makes me have to use restroom, and like um, it physically make like you physically have to use the restroom. Yes. Work. It 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 bu- it bubbles my guts to go into Bath and Body Works or Lush. Like the smells are way too overwhelming, and it genuinely upsets my stomach. And I and it, it turns everything into it to liquid, and I have to shit. Really? Yes. If you are some, what's that? Uh, I know the name of this. Uh, not a not a um, a doctor that deals with a gastro a gastro something. But maybe it's something that has to do with ENT though, like Anos throat too. I don't know. If you're ENT or a gastrointestinal person and like you have some insight to that, I'm very curious as to how that all works. It's very interesting to me that it, it makes you like it like bubbles. That is that's so wild to me. Why do you think you have a bad sense of taste? I don't have a bad sense of taste. Mona, you can't even distinguish vodka from tequila. That's not a great sense of taste. But nothing else is that. There was something else recently that you were talking about. You, I mean, you can't you can't discern you can't discern spring water from from Distilled water. When I say 
I can't also, discern purified it. purified isn't, because any water can be purified. Like, purified, there's purified spring water. Define just says purified. I didn't say distilled, it just says purified, but Define purified water. That's why I said that. Um, but I, like, when I say it, I can, like, Evian to me has, like, a drastic taste and everything else. Like, Evian, and pe- people know that about Evian. Like, Evian is just, like, it tastes weird. What is Evian? What type of water is Evian? I believe Evian is spring water. I'm almost positive Evian is spring water. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Evian not- natural spring water. Whatever natural spring they get that water from. It tastes a little crazy, for sure. I don't think it, I don't I don't think it tastes. I mean, I, I don't like Deer Park. Deer Park specific spring water just tastes like it's been in nature, and I want my water to taste like it came from a distillery. There's that there's that TikTok of that lady who she goes to Iceland. I think it's Iceland, and she just takes her thing of water and she just goes to the spring and apparently like the the natural waters in Iceland are so clean you can just like take your thing and go and just drink it it's it's it's, it's so purified which which in America never I mean maybe there are some places like Yellowstone or some parks you can do that I there's no there's no place in America I would go and be like oh yeah I don't I don't I don't see that for me ever you know maybe maybe in, in Brooklyn somewhere ever- have either of you ever been in a public fountain like Washington Square Park? You know, how people hang out there during the summer. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to go. To, when I was a kid, I used to go to public fountains all the time, like splash around in a fountain or or to a water park. I went to um, water parks when I was a kid, or I would go to Six Flags. Jake, of your mic. I was. I would go to Six Flags and stand at that place where the 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 boat crashes down and then all the water hits you. Yeah, I, I used to in in the public parks in New York. They have like those. Geysers, yeah, you can go play around and splash around. I used to do that as a kid for sure. Kamika and I used to do it in the park all the time together. Um, and I I used to drink public fountain water. I don't think I would now as an adult, but as a kid, I used to do it all the time. When I was a kid, I would, uh, at the school, the water fountain, I would put my mouth on the spigot and suck it. That's how you got the most water. That is so gross. I also think you calling a child gross. Yes, that's gross behavior. You're calling a child gross. Yes, absolutely, that's gross. Wow. Um, I would. I oh, it always not. I get it. I'm sure because like with what plumbing and how it all works, but always like mentally grosses me out that water fountains are like right by the bathroom. Like they, that same bathroom sink water is probably what you're drinking. So why not just go to the bathroom and be like, I drink I drink water from the bathroom sink sometimes. No, you don't. I do. Do you it's, really? It's literally the exact same water coming out of your kitchen sink. I, I out of your kitchen sink. It's literally the exact same water. You know the water. I mean, I don't drink out of the toilet, but the water going into your toilet is also. You want to say then drink that? But it's in a toilet, money. That doesn't make sense. They clean it. It's in a, it's in a toilet. That doesn't make any sense. I'm also not licking water from my sink. <laughs> I'm getting it directly from the faucet. And the water in the toilet is rubbing against the entire bowl as it goes down. So when you go to the bathroom in like a in the airport, you just well, do you bring a cup? Do you have like a refillable? I do thing? it in a hotel. Um, sometimes I've I've done it at home before, if I'm but not like, like a public place. Um, probably not. I'm I'm th- I'm, th- I'm thinking of you going to the bathroom at Atlanta Hirschfeld Jackson Airport and being like, ooh. I would I would sit there and be like, what is what is he going through? I would drink a bottle of water from the Hartsville Jackson Atlanta public um bathroom though, from the sink. I would drink a bottle of water from there. Work. It's just it's it's, it's the same tap water that you're gonna Listen, get. I'm sure it is. It's the, it, when you go to the restaurant in the um in the the airport, the same water. Actually, it's just it's just, but to me, just all the germs. People people fucking wash their shitty hands in that sink. People who knows what people are, t- are doing with those bathroom bathroom sinks are so you, you have to, you have to from use your hands that a lot of people drink from you, the well, at least it was a wash you don't know how often those the people the, right before you did that uh, uh, some bitch probably fucking shit her brains on was fucking washing their hands trying to get the shit off her who knows what happened in that sink you know that probably happened but more than likely not but it could like someone off that, by that by that same notion, someone could have just shit in the cup you just drank from, it, and they could have not washed it. Someone is probably less, not. Someone is less likely to have shit in the cup that you're just drinking the Buffalo Wild Wings than somebody washing their shitty hands at a at a public bathroom. Like the the likelihood that someone shit in the cup of Buffalo Wild Wings and the likelihood that someone was washing their shitty hands at a bathroom is a way higher probability than than the shit in their cup. I agree, but I think they're also both drastically low. It's kind of like the thing. Like it's kind of like the, low. The idea that the, I I think that the 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 chances that someone has shit on their hands. Let me finish the whole statement. Someone has shit on their hands 
and then gone to the sink that you are using and then got the shit off their hands, but then got some shit on the sink is probably insanely low. Okay, well, but there's so I mean, insane. It is high. Most when it's, most times you go to an airport bathroom, a few people are shitting. So when I say shitty hands, maybe not shit on their hands. Let's say that they did take a shit and they wiped their ass. Oh my god, we're saying shit too much on the microphone. And they wipe their ass and they wash in the sink. That happens many times a day, several times a day even. So I'm saying, like, just the germs from all of that. As opposed to that's the ones that are on your cup, or probably. You know, I just don't share this concern that you share. I'm not like I don't, I don't navigate the world being afraid that that because these like I, I remember, there was someone I was talking to recently. I found this when I was a like, younger. I found this belt. A young warthog. I, and I was like, oh, this belt's so cute. I just found it outside. And someone was like, for all you know, someone could have took that and rubbed it between their ass cheeks and fuck. And I was like, yeah, but probably not. Like more than likely, that didn't happen. Yeah, so I'm just definitely. Con- I agree. So, so I'm like, that. I'm like, I'm just not concerned. Or someone's like, someone could have threw up on this plate. That actually probably happens a lot more than you think it does. Probably someone vomiting on a plate at a restaurant probably happens more than people shitting on their hands in a bathroom. Probably, but but, but, I'm, but I'm also like, I'm I'm just not. I'm just not. I'm not. I'm just not a germaphobe. I'm just not. Work. I'm just yeah. like I I've, I've lived my my life pretty healthy. I, I don't. I'm not reckless. I'm not like an. I'm not licking toilet seats. But I'm like, it's a sink. It has water. I'm going to drink it. I'm very lucky to live in a country and in, in a place in this country, this place in this very own country. I'm very, lucky to, I'm very lucky to live in a place where you can drink water from the sink. And more than likely, I'm, I'm, probably in the 99.9 percentile, nothing's going to happen to you. So just drink. So I'm just like, just drink the water. I agree. Someone probably did not throw up on a plate or rub a belt between their ass. So someone probably washed their shitty hands in the sink. And that is probably true in a public bathroom. Yeah, but it probably what I'm saying is it probably won't make you sick. I mean, the, the it may not make you sick. I, I, I just the the I gross really, of it. I hate it's to just, break the I news to you, that. but your interactions with fecal matter on a daily basis is probably so much higher than you think it is. It is um, probably sure, listen, it's, it's, it's on door handles and etc. We know that shit. But I'm just, I'm specifically talking about a bathroom sink where you wash your hands after you take a dump at the Atlanta Jacksonville Hartsfield at Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. I'm not trying to convince you to take a drink from the from the. Oh, and I will not. You have not, and I won't. On that note, we have to go. We have to leave here in like. Well, according minutes. to you, we can go in about uh four hours. Honestly, we can leave at seven thirty. We leave at seven thirty. No, we need. I want to get dressed. I'm leaving. I'm leaving by seven fifteen. Okay, well, bitch, I had the tickets. So what's up? You know, I bought, I bought the tickets. <laughs> yeah, but you bought them on my, Kennedy bought them on my ticket master. So what's good, Miley? Miley, what's good? I'll see you at 17. Miley, what's good? I'll see you at 17. Well, I need to shower, so let's wrap it up, well, bitch. Wrap a shower, bitch. <laughs> we're doing a podcast. We're not doing a podcast. <laughs> the podcast is over. So we're not going late. 